Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the last type of purification technique called chromatography. Chromatography is a very important separation and purification technique not only in laboratory but also used wide scale in industries. Let us now study about what is chromatography, what are the basic principles in involved in chromatography as well as the various types of this particular technique. Chromatography is essentially used to separate mixtures into its constituent parts and also to test the purity of a given compound. Here the mixture of compounds is applied to a stationary phase which can be a solid or a liquid and the pure solvent or a mixture of solvents or in cases like in techniques called gas chromatography, the gas will act as a mobile phase and uh, it is allowed to move through the stationary phase. Now how does the separation take place? Separation of compounds into constituent parts takes place based on the affinity of the compound with respect to the adsorbent. So there are two major types of chromatographic techniques which are adsorption chromatography and partition chromatography and adsorption chromatography can also be further classified into two main types which are column chromatography and thin layer chromatography. We will study about each of these in detail in this particular section. Let us now try to understand uh, column chromatography which is an important type of adsorption chromatographic technique. So here we can see that in column chromatography the most commonly employed adsorbents are nothing but silica gel and alumina. Now you can see that a simple column chromatographic technique would look like this where you have the separation of mixture over a column of adsorbent which acts as a stationary phase. Here you have a glass wool or a cotton plug that is kept at the bottom of the column and a plug here. Now the mixture of compounds that we need to separate is placed on top of the column. So once this is done, our mobile phase which could be a single liquid or a mixture of liquid or even gas can be eluted or passed through the column such that the mixture of compounds gets along with the mobile phase gets eluted and separated via its interaction with the adsorbent. Here you can see that as I just mentioned depending on the degree of affinity of the compounds to the adsorbent they are adsorbed to different degree until complete separation takes place. So here again as I mentioned the affinity is usually based on factors like polarity that is if we have a very polar adsorbent and if our compound of interest to be separated is also highly polar. In that case, as soon as it is eluted through using an eluent, it gets strongly attracted to the adsorbent and due to the strong interaction, the compound will get retained at the top of the column itself. Now as the same thing is mentioned here, that is the most readily adsorbed component are retained at the top of the column. Now if our adsorbent is again polar and if the mixture of compounds have substances which are not very polar, then the interaction is not very strong obviously. In that case, the compound will simply elude down and would be collected at the lower part of the column. So to understand that, let us look at this diagram here. Here we can see that we have a mixture of compounds which is placed at the top of the column here and under the steady flow of solvents, we can see that the mixture gets separated into two different compounds like this, two different spots as given here. So here we can see that this particular spot which is shown as yellow has a higher attraction or higher affinity towards the adsorbent and hence it is retained at the top part of the column and the one which has lower at attraction or affinity is retained at the lower part of the column. So this is essentially what happens in a column chromatography. Let us try to understand what happens in a thin layer chromatography. In thin layer chromatography, the mixture is placed over a thin layer of adsorbent which is again spread on a glass plate. So the mixture to be separated is placed as a dot on this particular glass plate which is called a CLC plate. Now here this plate is then placed in a closed jar which contains a solvent or an eluent. Now when this particular TLC plate is placed in the jar and you have the solvent which is at the bottom, this dot of mixture that is mixture which is placed as a dot is just a little above the base of the solvent. Now the solvent will rise up due to capillary action and the separation of compounds will take place based on the retention. So based on affinity and retention we can calculate the 
uh, relative adsorption of each of these compounds by using a very important uh, parameter called retention factor or RF factor. So, what is RF factor? RF factor is nothing but the distance moved by the substance from the baseline which can be de denoted as x by the distance moved by the solvent from the baseline which can be denoted as y. Let us now try to understand this in a bit more detail. So, here we have a typical TLC plate which looks something like this where the dot that is has been placed here which is the mixture of the compounds containing toluene and phenol and as the eluent as the solvent rises up the separation has taken place in this way that phenol has been adsorbed here and toluene has been adsorbed here and the distance travelled by the solvent is from here to here which de denoted by the solvent front. Now why do you think phenol has been adsorbed here and toluene has uh, travelled all the way up this here. So we know that an adsorbent is a silica gel which is polar in nature and we know that oxygen of the phenol can interact strongly with silica gel by forming hydrogen bonds. However, toluene can form no such interaction with the silica gel such that it has lesser interaction with the adsorbent. Now due to strong interaction between phenol and the adsorbent, it gets retained quickly as the solvent moves up and hence re phenol gets retained quickly here. However, because toluene has no such interaction, strong interaction, it travels further up and gets retained at this particular spot. So this is essentially how we can show the difference of affinity of the two compounds with respect to the adsorbent in a typical TLC plate. When we have colorless spots, the compounds can be easily detected by using a UV lamp or by placing it under a UV light or by immersing it in a jar which contains crystals of iodine. Now in special cases like a separation of amino acids, we use special spray reagents like ninhydrin to detect the presence of the separated spots. So this is what essentially happens in a typical uh, thin layer chromatography and I, I hope you are very clear on what are the basic differences between a column chromatography and thin layer chromatography and what essentially happens in adsorption chromatography as a whole. Now let us move on to the second type of chromatography which is partition chromatography. Partition chromatography essentially is based on continuous differential distribution of components of a mixture between stationary and mobile phase. So this might sound very similar to what we just studied previously about adsorption chromatography. However, you need to note that these are very different because in column or thin layer chromatography our adsorbent is a solid that is adsorption chromatography is a solid liquid chromatography but partition chromatography is liquid liquid chromatography. So what do we mean by that? Both adsorbent and the mobile phase both are liquid in nature. A typical example of partition chromatography is nothing but paper chromatography. So we have a special type of paper called chromatography paper which is composed essentially of cellulose. However, note that cellulose is not the stationary phase but the stationary phase is nothing but water trapped in the cellulose. So the mobile phase can be any liquid or a mixture of liquids in which water is one of the major constituents. Now the process of partition chromatography is very similar to what we said in thin layer chromatography that is a spot of the mixture is placed at the bottom of the paper chromatography paper and now this is suspended in a suitable solvent or a mixture of solvents. So what happens after this? The solvent rises up again by capillary action and the solvent essentially the LUN essentially separates the mixture into different components based on their differing partition between the mobile phase and the stationary phase. So that is what essentially happens in a partition chromatography as opposed to what happens in an adsorption chromatography. So here the paper strip also called as chromatograph is then allowed to dry and the colorless spots can be seen or detected using UV light or we can also employ appropriate spray reagents for its detection. I hope you are very clear on what is chromatography, what is the basic underlying principle in chromatography as well as the different types of chromatography techniques used in different cases. Thank you.